Well, welcome. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> welcome to another edition of the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. Our final episode. Last one. Yeah, it is. Uh, better, all I'm saying right, right now is buckle up because we've got one more episode and... There are no brakes on this vehicle. There's not, a, especially on the vehicle that we're driving tonight, there's, there's no stopping. Yeah, our season might be coming to an end, but for the teams in the playoff hunt, their goal was to keep their seasons alive. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineup. There you see the Odessa Permian Panthers, the mojo paid a visit to Franklin tonight to take on the Cougars. And then we'll head over to the SAC, where the East Lake Falcons were taking on the San Angelo Central Bobcats, as San Angelo made a trip over here to El Paso. And then in Class 5A, Division 2, we'll check in with the Burgess Mustangs as they took on the Horizon wild game Scorpions. Yeah. It was definitely a wild game. And we're going to have to make some adjustments here because uh, Question we, wa we want to call the action with the players That's and stuff. Right. We're having some technical difficulties. So if you notice these highlights aren't, uh, we're not calling the names. We're going to make some adjustments right here right. in this new studio that we have so we can make sure everybody's name it get, gets called and who made a play today. But, but back, let's go ahead. Back to Horizon. Uh, yeah. The year of the Scorpions, what Nate called it. I've called it that all year long. It's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting highlights there because it comes down to couple key plays that you won't want to miss. It came down to one point in the end is really what it did. But starting off, Adrian, I know it, you're taking exactly. a Exactly. Let's go ahead and start in district with class 6A, the Franklin Cougars, getting to play host to the Mojo from Odessa Permian. That is our game of the week. Let's go ahead and take it to Franklin High School. Here we go. As you see, Odessa Permian. S striking first. Right there. Not so much home field advantage for the Cougars. That's Cougars, Cam though. Cameron Bird going to lay it out to McWhorter right there. Nice game. And there you see Bird to McWhorter. Franklin rolling at that point. Was then, Rodney Hall with uh, Jaquan Richardson? Yeah, 14-7 here. Permian, same duo there. It's Richardson. Jay Rich. Permian starting to run away with it, 21-7 by this point. Franklin not letting it go. Cameron Bird again to Mile. Nope. But Richardson again. Yeah. Richardson for the mojo. Looks like it's 21-7. Now it's Bird over the middle. And hauls it in. Touchdown. For, are we going to Yeah, it looks like McWhorter. He's got a step on his man, takes it into the painted grass for the score. The home crowd, Frank and Cougars, they're loving it. They need the football back. They're going the onside kick. Guess what, gentlemen? It ends up in the purple jerseys. Franklin gets it right back. Oh, back the other way. Trick trick race. Race. That's right. Ending up in trick the end zone. works. Touchdown, Franklin. So they're closing the gap here. Two-score game. However, Permian. Permian, as we know, they're one of the most legendary too high good. school teams out there, guys. Just too good. Yeah, I, when I took this job down here, I knew Permian because obviously Friday Night Lights and then, you know, seeing them play real time, they're, they're quite a treat to watch. But Frank, Franklin's still playing here, playing it out. Bird rolling. Find a little time. Just wide enough. open. Yeah. Threading Touch, the needle. Touchdown there, On a wide open receiver. So it's a one-score game here. Fans getting back Student into Student section. Will Heron once a member of that That's section. That's right. But the mojo going to open it up right there as you see the touchdown run right there and then just ground and pound the mojo at this point. As there you see, they ran away with it in the second half. They are the bi-district champions. Final score, you see it. Odessa Permian 56 over Franklin 28. The Cougars came into this game on an eight-game win streak. They hadn't lost the game since early September, but it just goes to show you once the playoffs come yep. and you get paired up with these Midland teams, Midland Odessa area teams, they're tough. They're always tough. 56 to 28 was the final. We caught up with head coach Franklin's head coach, Darren Walker, after the game. It was a great season. The kids did a great job. Uh, the coaches, very proud of both the players and the coaches. They, uh, stood, you know, stepped up when they needed to this season. Uh, after two tough road games to start the season, they really put it together, kept playing hard. They didn't give up. Uh, undisputed, un uh, defeated district champs. Very proud of that. Something that could not be taken away. We hoped for a little bit more tonight, but it just wasn't our night. All right. Talk to me about that onside kick. Me personally, I shot a bunch of games. I've never seen it work. Uh, I mean, it kind of it kind of gave you guys a boost there. 
Yeah, well, we we have it our, we were going to plan on using it. We knew we went, we just weren't sure when. It was the perfect time for it. Uh, the coaches said, let's go for it when we did, and luckily the kids made the play. Coach. So Congratulations, Frank, though, to Franklin. They're a good season overall. That's what you see. The team that wins the city in the regular season then bows out in the first round, and you see other teams, teams that Franklin beat this season, see their seasons extended. It's just the, uh, the cruel life of the high school football playoffs here in Texas. That's right. Well, we had a lot more coming here. Mm -hmm. Nate, you've got this read. That's right. That's correct. Pebble Hills. Also, we just talked about Midland. Pebble Hills was in the P base earlier tonight, taking on Midland Legacy. Remember, Midland Legacy, formerly Midland Lee. Let's on, head on out there for those highlights. See, read the helmets there. Midland Lee, now Midland Legacy, name change. Pebble Hills, those helmets still the same. I love that logo for Pebble Hills. Right up the middle, early on. This is Cam Murray of Legacy. Sats quarter, Sacks quarterback, Gael Ochoa. Little sack dance there, love it from the big dog. And next up. On offense, the Rebels going oh. up top. High pointing the football. Chris Brazell. Brazel Dazzle. Brazel Dazzle. Count it. Midland Lee Legacy going right back to the well there. Up top. Touchdown. Uh, listen, you know that up top the height and the size from these P base teams is just something else. But Pebble Hills trying to answer Ochoa over the middle. Pass is complete, but it's to the guy in the wrong jersey. Intercepted there by Legacy, picked off by Damian Johnson. And then that sets this up right here. A few plays later, this is Davila. This time keeps it himself, solo mission. Legacy all over Pebble Hills early. And the Spartans just couldn't quite get into a groove. Ochoa goes over the middle, but Mario Serrano throws down the receiver. That's just a Filthy. microcosm of the Filthy afternoon. Yeah. yeah, big hit. It looks like a face mask there. Is there no flag? Come on now. Midland Lee Legacy, Midland Legacy rather, all over the Spartans in this one. Final score, 43-22. to 22. Tough bucket for Mark Torres and the Spartans, but they got a young team. they got some guys coming back next year, and it's, again, you, you, you read the highlight there. Physical play. Out there. I think you could have called a, couple, called a couple flags there. That's right. A physical game there, physical game where we're going. We do turn to yeah. a Class 6A here, Division 2, the Eastlake Falcons. They, they did finish the season off here, second in District 1-6A, so they do get to go host a playoff game here over at the SAC. Will Heron was live at that game, and uh, anytime Will Heron is at the SAC, you know, it's uh, a game good enough to be the game of the week. This one, uh, unfortunately, was not. Will Heron, your Cougars were the game of the week. Unfortunately, uh, they, <laughs> they did not make it. But you've got good news for us here. You're joining us here for the last time uh, this season. Will, uh, what did you see there at the sack? The Will, house that Dumas built. Will, you got an open tab there at the sack, my man. I'm telling you, man, it was fantastic over the sack, as always. Another barn burner. You guys set me up with. Usually it's these out of town teams that come in and stump a mud hole, the Chuco teams today. But East Lake was having none of it. Beautiful, if not a little chilly out at the sack tonight. San Angelo Central High Bobcats came in looking to take a swipe at the East Lake Falcons. First quarter, East Lake marches down the field to the red zone where Sebastian Rendon fakes the handoff and rolls to his right to find Adrian Lopez for the quick six. Eastlake was working the trickeration all game. Here, Rendon hits Lopez. He tosses the ball to that bad man, Elijah Uribe, for the hook and ladder. Uribe speeds down the field. Oh, but he gets caught from behind after the big game. That drive, though, would stall out. Second quarter, and the Bobcats are just heaving it up. Tyler Hill finds himself. Oh, no! A wide open Jacob English who ties the game up at 7. He could have high stepped in there. Second half action. San Angelo up 10-7 to seven on the Falcon 5-yard line. Hill calls his own number and sneaks in to put the Bobcats up 17-14. to 14. Three minutes left in the ball game and it's the big man again fighting to give his Falcons the 21-17 to 17 lead. Here we go, boys. Under a minute left in the season for one of these two teams. Bobcats with the prayer. But Tristan Finia says, nah, 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 nah. Dashes all hope. The East Lake Falcons win the game 21 to 17. I spoke with that hot rod coach Rodriguez and Elijah Uribe, the bad man, after their well deserved celebration. 
think that up front, which is our strength offensively, we were able to wear them, wear them down. And then, you know, it's just a cat and mouse game here on defense. You know, we'd, we'd hit them sometimes, we'd give up some third downs. You know, it's always hard coming back. Um, we were down in the, in the uh, uh, first half. But, you know, we came back, and our, like I told you, our coach, man, he motivated us. We made sure we came out there. It's always hard starting up, but you know what? We finished strong, and that's what matters. That's true. Great game to watch. Something I really didn't have time to get into was the defense by Eastlake. Number 90, Caleb Emery, was in the Bobcat backfield all night. If it was a sack or a tackle for a loss, Emery had his nose in it. I'm excited to see what that star offense and the stack defense can do in the later rounds. Boys! It's been a pleasure doing business with y'all. Feels like the first game of the season. Thank you for the memories. Now, every single year, it just gets better and better. Uh, Will sometimes has a mustache during the blitz. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes doesn't he matter. shaves it off. Sometimes, sometimes he, he shaves it during. He uses the show as a platform for uh, shaving. That's right. Will Heron, as always, thank you for bringing the electricity. Another great season in the books. Couldn't be complete without you, my man. Well, let's go ahead. There was one final team in 6A in action tonight. That would be the Eastwood Troopers. They finished fourth in District 1 6A. They had to hit the road to Abilene to take on the Eagles. And uh, whenever you go up to Abilene, it's always it's never a, easy. Yeah, always a tough game. But the Troopers had the advantage here. They were up 23 to 17 in the fourth quarter. But here comes Abilene. That's the King Thomas for the touchdown. So Abilene is back in front. But the Troopers had a little more than two minutes to work with in this one. Andrew Martinez. Check out this oh. play right here. Buying some time. Yep. He's going to connect with Curtis Murillo and get taken about the three-yard line right there. A couple of plays later, though, Eastwood now is knocking on the door. Martinez with the keeper. Walks it in. And the Troopers are on top, but they left Abilene with a minute 30 left. Plenty of time for the Eagles to make something happen, but take a look what happens here. Woo! The Troopers put that one to bed with the, the pick right there so the troopers go on to upset abilene in abilene by the final score you see it 31 to 27 eastwood becomes just the second team from el paso ever to beat abilene in football so congrats to those troopers i'll go ahead and do it right now let's hear it trooper clap for the troopers i mean again this was just a massive upset going to abilene going to their house and pulling off the dub congrats to Head coach Julio Lopez and the Troopers. And got an incredible win there for Eastwood. And now next week, moving forward, off of Eastlake and East Eastwood, Eastlake and Eastwood will be playing next Friday night in Lubbock. One will be played at a Pirate Stadium. I think Eastlake's going to be a Pirate Stadium in Lubbock. The other one, uh, Eastwood, is going to be in Wolferth, Texas. Those games going on next Friday night in Lubbock. Could I possibly be headed to Lubbock? to go cover those teams. It's either there or the Permian Basin, either one of those two. Yeah. If I had my choice, though, I'd probably go Lubbock. What do you That's think, right. JC? I mean, I know you've got good experience in Lubbock. You've covered games there before. You've got friends in Lubbock, so That's why right. wouldn't you want to go? Lubbock for lovers, it's a beautiful spot to be to catch some playoff uh, football there. Also the hometown of Buddy Holly, just FYI there. Just yeah. putting it out there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch gears to Class 5A Division Two. These matchups are always a lot of fun because they pit two El Paso teams against one another. One from District 1-5A, the other from District 2-5A. A good one over at Burgess High as the Mustangs played host to the Horizon Scorpions. A battle of top running backs in this one. You had Ernie Garcia for Horizon, Tavares Jones, a future Missouri Tiger there two, for the Mustangs. Two of the best. Would this be his last game in a Burgess uniform? There you see Jones and Garcia there at the coin flip. Going to start here in the first quarter. Nice run by Garcia. He's going to make a statement here in the early moment of the game. Taking it down the sideline. He's going to get pushed out of bounds. And you're going to see the next... Right here, you see, there you go. There you go. Jones there and Garcia. That's what you want to see. Jones and Garcia sharing pleasantries. Well, back to the game right here. Horizon going to strike. As you oh. see, Aaron, th take a look at that hit right there. Yep. Hang on. Kihas to Aaron Barreno. We're going to slow-mo it here. Hits, right where you can just the see. The grab, the elevation. He the knows hit. he's going to take the hit. Hits her on the blitz, baby. And he still manages to hold on to the ball. Awesome stuff right there by Aaron Barreno. That made it 7-0, Scorpions. Horizon going to strike again. This time, Kihas with the keeper. That made it 14-0, Horizon. Horizon, though, on their next drive. Costly turnover right here, as you see. The pass to Garcia. Oh. He coughs it up. 
doesn't do that all season long. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about the playoffs. Bur right. You see Burgess on top. They recover. They go down the field. And who else are you going to give it to? Mr. Yep. Jones. His first touchdown of the, the night. Stare is down. This one. Yeah, he was there. They were fired. They were, they were fired up there. That made it 14 to six. Horizon was still on top. Extra point was no good. But Horizon marches right back down the field. The handoff to Garcia. He makes up for that fumble earlier. Aaron Garcia, Ernie Garcia takes it in. And Horizon. Take a look at the score in this one. This one, as close as you can get. Horizon gets the dub by one What do you call point. it? It's the year of the scorpion. There baby. you go. Uh, hats off to Coach Paulo Melendez too earlier. I was delivering cupcakes there earlier on this season. I feel like Remember, you did that a lot this year. Horizon started slow out of the gate. In, in non-district play, they took some losses, took some lumps. But even in that moment, Coach Melendez told me that they had a losing record at the time. He said, listen, if we can get hot towards the end of the season at the right time, it's all about not how, it's about when and when is right now for those scorpions 57 56 that was the final we didn't call the numbers out there but yeah as close as you can get awesome stuff jc the scorpions jc the over there <laughs> i did have the over so i'm cashing in uh good game there by horizon we'll see how far they can take things like you said it just may be the year of the scorpion nate, nate more yeah. more intracity action guys can you to a nine win team this year led by lj martin who's a four-star running back on the season we know can you to can play but jefferson Came La in Jeff. With, La Jeff came in with one of the more, their most successful seasons in recent memory. Six wins on the season, 5A Division II by district, by district round. Both teams going up against each other. Let's head on out to the blue turf. Scott Brooks and the Eagles hosting those Silver Foxes. Always up to something those Always two. Always those Silver Foxes. Like Sonny and Cher. <laughs> First quarter, Nathan Alcala back to pass, but he passes it to the wrong team. Telegraphed by Gio Freyer in interception. Flips the field for the Eagles. Sets up a one-yard keeper from Devin Granados. Right in your living room. That makes it 14-0 in favor of Canutillo. Silver Fox is in an early hole, but they come back, and they answer here. Alcala, it's a wide open. We've seen Alcala do this all year, but wow. wide open is Jose Rodriguez. Cuts it in half to make it a 14-7 ball game. But the best player on the field tonight was indeed LJ Martin. The young man picked up an offer from... Texas Tech earlier this week. He certainly has the build of a Big 12 back. Six foot one, pickup of 20 here. JC, I think you would look good in this jacket. Ooh, that's, that's a good a nice jacket. jacket. Check out the yeah. embroidery. Yeah, I, the, I gotta, I gotta grow some sideburns, but yeah. On the dead of it, I tried to uh, buy it off the guy, but we could not come to an agreement mm. on a price. I wouldn't sell it. Granados again, a few plays later. Also a capable runner. He's hungry like the wolf. Into there the end go. zone from 26 yards out, and it's a 21-7 lead. For Kenya Teo, Jeff kept punting, and Kenya Teo kept giving it to LJ Martin on the pitch out here. Might as well. Di directional navigation on the big gainer. The rest of Texas is going to find all, up, all about Martin here in these later rounds. And tell your girlfriend you'll be free next Friday. How about that song? Girlfriends. Is that a girlfriend? Yeah. Girlfriend. Well, I'm in, I might be in Lubbock. There you go. So, oh, that's true. What does that's that true. mean? What does yeah. that tell you? <laughs> Look out, Lubbock. LJ Martin again. Eagles moving on to the area championship. They get Canyon Randall there. Final score, 41-13, but not the last year we'll hear from La Jeff, the mascots, you know? Eagle, yeah. Eagles and foxes. Little All friends. Love to the see best the friends. friends. That's right. Little, cro little crossbreeding. Not, uh, not, not real friends in the animal kingdom, but. Is that, I think that's a predator, uh, a prey and predator type situation. That's right. In the, in the <laughs> but it's good to see they've worked it out here. Mm-hmm. Good sportsmanship. And they go back to their respective handlers. That's right. To thank them. <laughs> Plenty more to talk about. We're going to turn our attention when we come back after the break to Class 5A Division One, where Del Valle had a tough test against the Amarillo Sandys. Then we'll head to the Field of Dreams over in Las Cruces, where we were talking quarterfinal action. Las Cruces, Centennial, one of these teams is going to punch their ticket to the Final Four. Ready to take the next step in your truck driving career? Arribas Enterprises Transportation is ready for you. As Best of El Paso 2020 Award recipients, we're a proud member of our community and offer outstanding opportunities in the transportation industry. We offer unmatched smiles and flexibility and an excellent benefits package that's good for you and your family. To find out more on how we can help you on your next career move, call us or visit us online. Arribas Enterprises Transportation Services, committed to excellence. When we met Coach Brown at IDEA, he was a perfect role model for my daughter. 
We had to do school virtually. That's when things went south and my grades started slipping up. If I know that a student's having a rougher time, let me go visit. They live relatively close, so we drove around the corner. And so we just sat down, had about an hour long chat. You have these dreams and goals. How do we navigate you there? When I was in public school, I don't remember any teacher ever reaching out, hey, do you need anything? He really helped me go in the right direction. I know I can count on you throughout my entire life. Two of America's best known almanacs are calling for a wet, cold winter. But how do they come up with those forecasts months or even years in advance? There's three scientific disciplines. We break it into zones and then we break it into three day segments. And how does that compare with the National Weather Service? Winter storm warning in effect. Meteorologist Katie Frazier decided to find out. Watch her special report on this year's winter forecast. Monday night at 10, only on EBC7. Well, now to Class 5A Division 1, as Bel Air saw an early exit from the playoffs last night in Lubbock, but three teams were still in the hunt on this Friday, two of them hosting teams from Amarillo. Rachel Phillips is back with us for the episode of The Blitz. There she is. and she, she was out at Del Valle for their matchup against the Amarillo Sandys. What's going on, Rachel? I'm good, guys. It's nice to be back inside. It was cold out there, but I appreciate you having me back. Visadores coming off a close 14 to 10 loss to Chapin last week, where their offense really just wasn't firing. So tonight, the call was to bring the O if they were any chance of beating Amarillo. Now, the beat going, but were they able to answer the call on their opening drive? They worked it up the field pretty patiently. Then it's Jesse Ramos to Eli Molina in the corner. The crowd thinking and hoping it was a TV, but the umps not agreeing. But hey, when you can do this, it doesn't matter. Ramos, the very next play for the QB, sneak into the end zone. And the Conquistadores leading seven to nothing. And it was going off at Del Valle. Sirens on, lights flashing, everything you could imagine. Then Amarillo on the third and one with the fumble. And Conquistadores able to snatch it up and head into the second with a seven nothing lead. Probably had many of these Sandys fans questioning why they made the trip to sit in the cold. But second quarter, it was all Sandys. Tyrese Molden gets the hand up and takes it to the edge. And I mean the very edge. Many Del Valle fans questioning whether he went out there. You can be the judge, but Molden, he cuts back inside and takes it to the house for a nearly 70 yard touchdown and hey now the sandys don't care about the cold they're in it it's a seven a piece game a little later mason graham the six foot five qb for the sandys goes straight into the end zone pure power and grit to get over the line the sandys leading the conquistadores 17 to 7 at the half and while del valle put another couple on tds on the board but it was all amarillo the final 45 to 21 now, obviously, the season is over for Del Valle, but for QB Jesse Ramos, his season ended with about three to go in the third. You can see where he got hit just there. He was put on a stretcher very carefully and taken off. I spoke to Del Valle head coach Rudy Contreras about how Jesse is doing and what this team means to him. He was moving his fingers. He was moving his feet, so that's always a good sign. Uh, I know they took him in, so we'll be checking up on him later on today. We're just uh, praying for him. For him and his family, he's a big part of our success this year and, and a big part of our program. So I'm very proud of him. We had a really good, uh, tough schedule, and they came out and, and played really good, really well. Um, we just didn't get the W at the end of the season. That's how it goes sometimes, but, but at the end of the day, we're all very proud of him. Guys, a tough one there for Devaye, but hasn't been a tough season for me. It's been very enjoyable to be on the Blitz with you all. It's been very fun, so thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, hate, hate to see that injury, Rachel, but thank you for reporting it. And uh, thank you for joining us for the Blitz this year. We've had you for some weeks. We haven't had you for others. Hopefully next year uh, we will get to have you for some more weeks. But it's been great to pick up on the Aussie lingo here. Uh, here you hear the corner and the umps and all that stuff. It always makes my day, Rachel. I'm glad I can make you day, day JC. That's all <laughs> I'm trying to do out here. Rachel will be joining us at the end of the show as well for our final farewell in just a few minutes. But we want to, again, go back to Jesse and just say uh, yeah, you know, our yeah. prayers that are is, with him. That is tough to see for yeah. Jesse Ramos. He's such that. a tough player, mm -hmm. too. I've got, I got the chance to know him and talk to him a little bit this year. That's actually the first I, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing of that. That's, that's tough to see. Really, really hope he's okay. And obviously, Coach Contreras is, he runs a tremendous clean program over there with the Conquistadores. Mm -hmm. But, Nate, uh, we have the moving on to the next game. It mm -hmm. was Chapin hosting another team from Amarillo making the trip to El Paso, and that was Cap Rock, Longhorns. That was the Horns one. indeed, that's right. Del Valle, that was the team that lost to Chapin last week. How would Chapin follow it up? Chapin under a, a program renaissance under Ryan Warner here, trying to carry it on into the area round. Striking first of the Huskies. Over to Anthony Rivera, touchdown. Rivera's made a 
living in the end zone this season. Mason Standifer has been dishing the rock his way all year long. Got a mortgage. And then, that's right. And then Standifer right here lowers the shoulder, and he's in. Touchdown. So it's 14 nothing. Chapin, the skis with an early lead. Then Cap Rock, they're coming from Amarillo. They're, you know, they're not going down without a fight here. How about Dustin Caruth dragging defenders? How about that? Nice pickup, moving the chains. And then Caruth. No, Bad get, snap, but it didn't matter. He's got an open tab, JC. You know a thing or two about that. Oh. Touchdown. Chocolate milk. Touchdown, Check Longhorns. Play, this yeah. Look at this. Into the stratosphere. Oh, Who's sta shooting this? Stand it for up top and caught. This was David Moreno. Rivera. Rivera. Moreno. Moreno on the lens. Rivera on the hands. With the hands. Oh, love it. Chapin. Moreno with the shot of the night. Well, I'm Chapin's sorry. Chapin's going to win this ball game. I mean, you see and the, the rack, rack focus. focus. <laughs> Chapin, incredible. They scored a touchdown in the final few minutes, went for two, got the deuce in the skis, going to the area championship. How about Ryan Warner here in year two? 29-28. Awesome El Dorado had to hit the road to Amarillo. Oh. A tough test here for the Aztecs. Easy there. Don't Tell get run over. Uh, here move. taking on Tascosas. The Tascosa Rebels hosting El Paso's El Dorado. Aztecs here, the Rebels alum. Uh, World Davidson. Series champion Tucker Davidson. Yeah, he's in the house. Uh, in the second quarter, the Aztecs down by 21. Quincy Estrada on the keeper. It's a foot race there to the edge. Tucker Davidson? El Dorado. Yeah, down 21. To 7. That's what the script said. That's pretty to cool. the third quarter, Rebels. Hand off to Latravian Brown. He shook off a tackle. Take, take a look here. We're punting. We're, We're punting. punting. It was a punt. It was yeah. a punt. And it was a punt, but the Rebels... That's extra points right there. Taking it home. House call. A la casa. A dormir. I mean, they stole Texas Tech's uh, tea there. I'm not going to This was all sound, Tascosa. Sound this one. Salty here, but it was all Tascosa. 53-7, your final there. Uh, fun fact, El Dorado, we played them our uh, homecoming game my senior year in high school many, many years ago. <laughs> Did you guys win? We won, actually. We were down by like 21 Came back and won. Who'd you take to homecoming that year? Uh, I took somebody and I went home with some. No, that's not true at all. I took one of my good friends and we had a great time. Went to Olive Garden and uh, danced the night away. What about your homecoming, Nate? Well, our director wants us to move on, which is why they have they have the Clint Lions on uh, the graphic here. We got to give a congratulations to those Clint Lions because this is in Class 4A. Wow. The Lions, they're going to be joining Riverside, moving on to the area around. Hear them roar. The Lions taking down, taking down Spirit Blues Santa Andrew. Top taking down San Angelo Lakeview by final score 33 to 7. Then we had also Mountain View in stock. Taking on Fort Stockton. Yeah, the Fort Stockton Panthers in stock on this night as Correct. they were all over the Lobos tonight 47 to 8. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears to Las Cruces. No, not Brianna just yet. You hold yeah. your horse. You want to talk, about, you want to talk about a tease. Brianna's ready, though. She's, ready for, She's ready for social media. And if I know anything about was, the Blitz, we're going to be seeing La Jeff and maybe the return of Canatillo. Was, that my, was uh, she at my library. desk? She's at your desk. Yes. Yes. Hopefully, I, hopefully yes. I cleared my browser. Our history. studio is undergoing renovations, which is why we're like all over the place right now here at ABC7. So yes. It's, it's going to be a treat, though. It's when the be a studio's nice studio. done. Yeah. You're going to watch this be like, wow, I'm watching the network. So but thanks, for now, growing pains. Thanks for bearing with us. Something with some about New Mexico games. football, though. Yes, back to New Mexico. Let's go. Let's go, Nate. You were at uh, Las Cruces. Well, no, you weren't at, at the, actually, Sean Feliz. I can't that. Yeah. We, need you, me to, we need me to be. Yeah, yeah the power of the magic of television. Let's start it out. Las Cruces and Centennial, Centennial. Uh, clash in the regular season. Centennial came back and won late, shocking Las Cruces. But Las Cruces out for payback tonight. Let's head to the field of Dreams. There you see the Hawks coming on out. Aaron Ocampo, the city champions in the city of Crosses. Centennial. They're playing for Kate Beery. But Las Cruces looking to get in the mix. There's Dallas Boyd. Swings it out to the outside. That one's caught for the touchdown. It's 7-0 Cruces. Boyd again to the air. Boy. Not broken. Don't fix it. He's good. Touchdown yet again. All Cruces. That was be Zake Hawkins there in the reception. Boom. Bulldogs up 14 love. But the Hawks. Not going down without a fight. Ian Lopez up top and hauled in. That cuts it in half. 14-7 in favor of the Bulldogs. Las Cruces trying to get right back out to it. Eli Ogas up the middle. Touchdown, Dogs. 21-7. And there's the cheerleader. Was Kate Beery a cheerleader? I, I believe so. We think so. Okay, so we're <laughs> moving forward. Ian Lopez back for Centennial. High-scoring ball game. Let's just say skies were clear oh. to take off in this one. 
21-14 now in favor of Las Cruces. You can't be doing a stare down though when you're down 21-14, just saying. But then Boy takes it himself, calls his own number, solo mission, 28-14, Las Cruces. Las Cruces' offense, give them credit, they kept putting points on the board, but Centennial, mm -mm. They, they kept answering Tiny for Max. the interim. Yep. Lopez, how about a little back shoulder, Jason? Not a lot of defense here. That looks like you out there at uh, Escarate Park. Only takes me about eight tries before we get their or connection right, Nate. So 28-21, Las Cruces needing a touchdown to put it away. That's Boyd over the middle to Hawkins, who hauls it in inside the five, and then they just pitch out to Ogas, and that does it. 35-21, that TD seals it, and the blue and white storm in the field, not going to keep them off it tonight. The I Bulldogs think I see Cape Beery wow. in the midst. Kate Beery somewhere in there. You do not see Tom Scott. <laughs> no. There. No, he was not. No, you will see Kate Beery, though. After the game, we caught up with Cruces head coach Mark Lopez on the win that was. Man, I just, I just think our guys, they've done a tremendous job all year just growing and learning. And you don't get many second chance opportunities like this in, in football or in sports in general. For them to get this second chance opportunity, be so prepared as we were tonight, so proud of these coaches and everything they did. Man, I can't say enough. Where do we go from here, Coach? Man, you know, semifinals, baby. Final four now. Final four. Win one more to buy our last season together. Yeah, and that second chance opportunities that Coach Lopez was talking about was because Centennial beat them earlier this season by one point. So Las Cruces getting retribution when it mattered the most in the quarterfinals. Uh, Mayfield, Artesia, this game will actually be tomorrow. So just a heads up on that. Mayfield in Class 5A in the quarterfinals. A win tomorrow against Artesia would move them on to the Final Four in Class 5A. Then in Class also in Class 5A, something that unfortunately saw their season came, come to But what a season they had. At the hands of Farmington. This game was, if, if Farmington's the top seed in yeah. 4 yeah. This exactly. game was, seven, Farmington led 7-6 seven, at halftime in this yep. game. <laughs> Desert Warriors were in Do it. Doppler Dave's a big fan big of fan. Santa Teresa. 28-6, the final. Then we're going to go ahead and bring it back here across the lines here in Texas. As you see, Anthony, their season comes to an end in Class 3A as they fell to the Brady Bulldogs today. 57-14 to 14 was the final. Still a heck of a season for the Anthony Wildcats. Adrian, a big fan her, of Anthony. You saw her earlier. Brianna, Perez. There she is. On social media for the last time. At What's my, up, Brianna? At my desk. That computer is also touchscreen, Brianna. I just wouldn't touch it, though. It is... <laughs> Nate Ryan's yeah. desk after all. So. Don't, look in the, don't look in the cabinet. Exactly, oh guys. Yeah, let's get into your favorite part of the Borderland Blitz, as we all know. Of course, this isn't the usual setup. This is Nate's desk. But, you know, I will keep going as I should. So, of course, I want to remind everybody to follow us on Twitter at Borderland Blitz. Now, let's see what this hashtag has in store for us today. Aaliyah, go Eagles by District Champs. I actually know her. So, she's one of my friends. Shout out to Aaliyah for using our hashtag. Enrique Herrera, congratulations. Eastlake has this nice video here. Can you feel the school pride and spirit? Thank you, Eastlake student, band, body, winter guard, cheer, and all our fans. You are awesome. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of Enrique today. He has another one here. Congratulations, your Eastlake Falcons. Again, Enrique on top of it today. Congratulations. Not a lot of great photos here. Take a look. I hope you can see some of these pictures. It's great. Congratulations by District Champions Eastlake again with Enrique. Congratulations Eastlake all the way. Enrique's on top of it today guys, let me just tell you. The Silver Foxes of course, we cannot go a day uh, a blitz without the Silver Foxes. Southside, one last time this season to all our Silver Foxes, know that your family, coaches, community are proud of you. Here we go with Jeff13, Canotillo41. Thank you guys for using our hashtag all blitz long. I really appreciate that. Again, Aliyah Canotillo, Eagles by District Champs. Canotillo 42, Jefferson 13, final score. Here you go. And then there's a lot going on here today, guys. And then I just want to show you this last one because I think it's pretty awesome. He is hitting the drums upside down. If I could get this to open.